Hello, Paradise Panther artists. My name is Mrs. Telfer, and I'm excited to be with you today to tell you about our next master artist, Winslow Homer. Homer is one of the greatest American painters and is best known for his watercolors and oil paintings of the sea. Born in 1836, his artwork paid attention to light and atmosphere and often featured ships, fishing boats, and other features of the ocean. So, ahoy mateys! Let's get started and learn more about this famous American artist. Here we go. Over 100 years ago, there was an artist named Winslow Homer. Look at how he is wearing a hat. He was always fashionably dressed, and during Homer's time, that meant always wearing a hat. Homer was born on the east coast of America, in Boston, Massachusetts. He lived by the Atlantic Ocean all through his life. His art studio was located on the southern coast of Maine, with a view of the ocean. We call this part of the United States New England. I cannot picture myself riding on a bicycle while wearing a formal suit and hat like Homer. Homer started his life as an artist by illustrating for newspapers. Photographs were not used at that time because the camera had just been invented. So instead of photographers, newspapers sent artists to draw the news events. They were called illustrators. Homer sketched events in America's history. He sketched Abraham Lincoln when he became president. He also illustrated the Civil War when the North and South fought each other. He would sketch a picture while watching it happen. Then, in his studio, he would draw that same picture on a block of wood. Other newspaper employees would whittle with sharp tools to create his picture in the wood. The wood was then inked, and paper was pressed onto it to get a print. These prints were always in black and white and very time consuming. They were called woodblock prints. This picture here is a woodblock print. If you look carefully, you can see hundreds of lines that Homer drew on the block of wood. Here, this soldier is hiding in the trees, ready to shoot any enemy soldiers. He is fighting during the Civil War on the northern side. Homer let us know he is going to spend a long time up in the tree because he has a water canteen hanging on a tree branch. Homer's Civil War illustrations were so popular that he decided to redo some of them in oil paints. This drawing was the first one he did in oils. Let's take a look at the painting. Without using your voice, Raise a quiet hand if you see how this oil painting is different from the woodblock print. Raise your hand if you have an idea and your teacher will call on you. Thank you. Yes, the oil painting is in color and there is no water canteen hanging from the branch. The painting was placed on exhibition to sell. Homer told his older brother that if it did not sell, he would give up painting and take a full-time job at a newspaper. So his brother secretly bought the painting. Homer didn't even discover this until many years later. When he did find out, Homer was angry and refused to speak to his brother for weeks. By that time in his life, however, Homer was a popular artist. His brother's trick had worked. As an observant art student, 
you may notice these children are wearing hats, but they are not wearing any shoes. Look at the building in the background. It is a one room schoolhouse. This means there is one teacher for all grades and all of the grades are in one classroom. Homer enjoyed showing children having fun like he did as a child. He didn't picture children all dressed up in their best clothing, sitting still for a portrait. He drew them outdoors, full of energy and adventure. The children are playing a game called Snap the Whip. Homer wanted us to feel the motion of the pulling of the line that these children were enjoying. This was one of Homer's favorite games as a child. Now, I'd like you to close your eyes and don't open them until I tell you to. Ready, set, open your eyes and look at the screen. I want you to think in your head about the first thing you were drawn to in this painting. What was the first thing you saw? Did you notice the boy in the middle first? I noticed him first because he is taller. He has a bigger hat and it is a lighter colored clothing. The first thing you see in a painting is called the focal point. Homer made you notice the taller boy first because he painted his hat and his shirt in lighter colors. The colors around the taller boy are darker. The boys in the painting are looking back, maybe because someone is waving in the far left of the field. I'm wondering who might that be? It might be a parent or a friend of the boys, but we can't see the person clearly. Homer wants you to tell your own story about who might be waving to the boys. So he painted the person far away. Without using your voice, raise a quiet hand if you can find the focal point or what you see first in this painting. Raise your hand and your teacher will call on you. Thank you. Yes, the focal point of this painting is the boat and the boys in the boat. The lightest part of this painting is the sky and the waves against the boat. The darkest part of this painting is the boat and the boys. Look carefully at how Homer places the lightest part up against the darkest part. He makes us look right at the boat by doing that. Light against dark creates contrast, and contrast is a good way to show a focal point. Notice here how the wind pushes the sails and makes the boat go fast. We know the boat is moving fast because the breeze is strong and it makes the sails lean over. Look carefully at the bottom of the boat. We can see that the boys and the man in the red shirt have been fishing. After Homer successfully sold a few oil paintings, he left newspaper illustrating. He spent all his time doing oil paintings and felt he could do more with oils to make a picture look real. He tried hard all his life to do realistic paintings. Homer hopes that this painting makes you feel as if you were actually there in the boat with the children. Homer would feel he had been successful if you said yes. Homer lived near the ocean all his life, and he loved to paint its excitement and power. He called this painting Lifeline. It shows a heroic rescue at sea. Do you feel the danger as the rescuer carries the woman back to shore? 
If you look closely in the upper left-hand side, you can see the tattered sails of the wrecked ship. Now let's find the horizon line. The horizon line is right here. Right here, this is where the sky meets the land in a landscape or where the sky meets the water in a seascape, like this one. This was a very popular painting and it sold the first day it was shown. I'm wondering if the woman in the painting survived. Without using your voice, show me a thumbs up if you think she survived, or a thumbs down if you think she didn't. Thank you. You can put your hands down now. We can't really tell what happened to her because her head is back and her eyes are closed. Homer got so tired of people asking him that question that he painted the picture again and called it a new name saved. Homer used dull, drab colors with only a splash of red in the woman's scarf. The touch of red balances all the other dull colors and also brings your attention to the center of the drama. Look at the contrast in this painting between the dark colors of the people and the light colors of the waves. The use of lightness and darkness in art is called value. A color can have many different values. You can take a color like red and make it darker by adding a little black to it. For lighter values, you would add white to a color. With enough white, you can even turn red into the color pink. Homer was a master at using value in his work. The lightest part of this picture is the spray of white waves. Look at how Homer placed the dark figures of the people in contrast to the white spray to catch your attention. Here, Homer made a change from this preparatory sketch of Lifeline to his finished painting by showing the rescuer's face and not covering it up with a scarf. Many art experts consider this Homer's greatest masterpiece, and yet he was never able to sell it. Many people didn't want this dangerous, scary scene hanging in their living rooms. This man looks like he is in danger maybe because of the sharks and the big waves. The wooden mast that holds up the sails broke off, so he can't get back home. He notices a water spout that is a small tornado close by. If it reaches the boat, it will certainly capsize, and he would end up in the water with the sharks. I'm wondering if he will be okay. Homer gives us a clue that there is hope for the man. Look, we can see a ship off in the distance. Here we see a deer drinking peacefully in the woods. I'm wondering if Homer painted this in the woods when he discovered the deer. Well, it looks that way, but actually he painted it from memory long after the deer had leaped away, when it was startled by Homer. It shows us a peaceful nature scene of beauty and his love of the outdoors. This is a watercolor painting. It looks a little transparent or see-through, and you can even still see some of the pencil lines that he used to sketch the picture first. We can tell that it is fall here, because the leaf colors are orange and yellow. Homer enjoyed going on fishing and camping trips with his brother. He would take his art materials so he could paint the beautiful outdoors. 
it was much easier to use watercolors because they dried very quickly. In Homer's later years, he painted only in watercolor and became a master at it. Here's another photo of Homer working in his studio. I bet you recognize the painting on the easel behind him. It's the shark picture that he couldn't sell. Winslow had a view of the ocean from this studio, which inspired many of his seascapes. Homer died at the age of 74, but he remained active and painted as long as he could. He lived by himself, close to nature, very contented with his life. He was considered the best American painter in the 1890s and was very popular with the public. Great job today learning about one of America's greatest artists. Next, in your art activity, I hope you enjoy creating a seascape using different values of black, gray, and white. You will be able to embrace Homer's love of the sea. And I will see you next time, Paradise Panther artists. Have a great day and smooth sailing.